In this session we going to look, the lifting of objects generally occurs on construction sites, in factories and other industrial situations. Correct lifting can move large objects efficiently and reduce manual handling operations. Incorrect lifting however, can lead to disastrous accidents. Every year, incorrect lifting procedures cause injuries, loss of work time and property. People, machinery, loads, methods and the work environment are all important factors for correct lifting. Provided that enough safety measures are fully implemented, lifting accidents can be reduced. Common accidents in lifting operations are overturning of the crane, falling objects, breaking the boom sling, touching overhead power line, collision with obstacles. In this session you are going to look Legislative requirements and code of practice of lifting operations. Local legislative requirements that apply to lifting operations include factories and industrial undertakings, lifting appliances and lifting gear, regulations enforced by the Labor Department, and shipping and port control, cargo handling, regulations enforced by the Marine Department. The Labor Department also published the Code of Practice for Safe Use of Mobile Crane and Tower Crane in 1998 and provides the trade with guidance for the safe use of cranes. In this session, people. Personnel related to the lifting operation include competent examiner, competent person, crane operator, slinger, signaler and others working nearby. The competent examiner is responsible for regular examinations of the lifting appliances or lifting gears. He shall be appointed by the employer or the owner of the lifting appliance or lifting gears, a registered professional engineer within a relevant discipline, properly trained with relevant practical experience. The competent person is responsible for regular inspections of lifting appliances or lifting gears. He shall be appointed by the employer or the owner of the lifting appliances slash lifting gears, properly trained with relevant practical experience. The crane operator is responsible for operating the crane correctly and safely. He shall be at least 18 years of age and hold a valid crane operation certificate. Be physically fit. Be familiar with hand signals for communication. In the session, suggested hand signals. During the lifting operation, either the slinger or signaler shall communicate with the operator. Other communication methods, for example, wireless walkie-talkies, telephones, etc. may also be used. In the session machinery, refers to lifting appliances and all lifting gears. The lifting appliance includes a crab, winch, teagle, pulley block, gin wheel, crane, shear leg, excavator, pile driver, pile extractor, dragline, aerial ropeway, aerial cableway transporter or overhead runway, etc. The lifting gears includes a chain sling, rope sling, ring or similar gear, link, hook, plate clamp, shackle, swivel or eye bolt. In the session, Cranes, Selection of Cranes For the correct selection of cranes, the following factors shall be considered, weights and dimensions of loads, height of lift and distances or areas of movement of loads, number and frequency of lifts, period of time for the lifting operation, ground conditions, other factors. In this session you are going to look, testing, examination and inspection. All testing and examination of cranes must be carried out by competent examiners and the regular inspections completed by competent personnel. All testing, examination and inspection reports and certificates shall be properly kept. Safe working loads The safe working load SWL, for operating the crane shall be specified according to the results of test and examination certificates, and such loads must not be exceeded during the lifting operation. Repair and maintenance All cranes shall have regular maintenance, to ensure they always kept in good operating conditions. The next topic, mobile crane operation points are, the mobile crane shall only be operated on a firm level ground that adequately supports the weight of the crane and loads. Before lifting, 
fully extend outriggers and ensure their stability on the ground. The weight of the load shall not exceed the safe working load. Never abruptly swing or stop the crane. Loads shall not be dragged on the ground. Move the load at a safe speed. Use low speeds within several meters of the load's destination. Adjust the boom length to ensure the crane is operating within the extent of the safe operation radius. When moving uphill or downhill, the boom angle shall be adjusted to the safe working condition. Next topic is tower crane. Operation points. Ensure that the automatic safe load indicator is installed. Provide safe means of access and egress. Ensure that the lifting routes do not collide with any object. Lifting routes shall not come across any building or pass over any person. Travel speed shall be as slow as possible to ensure the load's stability. Be aware of the height of lifting, the length of the crane's trolley and refer to the load chart. When the tower crane is not in operation, the crane's trolley must be positioned near the tower at minimum radius, with the hook raised to its highest position. During typhoons, the jib shall be set to the typhoon's leeward side with the brake released allowing the jib to swing freely. Lifting gears play an important part in the lifting operation. Their function is to tie the objects tightly and hang them on the crane. There is a great variety of lifting gears. If there is insufficient knowledge or a wrong choice is made, lifting may fail and accidents may result. All lifting gears shall be tested by qualified examiners and suitably marked with a safe working load SWL. Wire rope consists of individual wires laid into a number of strands, which are then wrapped around a central core. Different number of wires in the strands and various methods of arrangement may affect the characteristics of the wire rope sling. The wire rope shall be equipped with a thimble and with pressed metal sleeve and marked with a safe working load SWL. 5.2.1 Wire Rope Slings Points for Attention Use only suitable wire rope slings. Small bullet never use damaged wire rope slings. During lifting, the safe working load must not be exceeded. Regular inspections shall be conducted sudden elevation is not allowed small bullet if more than one wire rope sling is used in lifting. Pay attention to the angle between the slings. Inspection points. Small bullet the wire rope slings shall not be used and shall be disposed if they are. In the session, wire rope slings, cable clip. The cable clip shall be properly installed according to the following points. The wire rope sling is equipped with thimble. There is a minimum of three cable clips. The direction of installation shall be correct. The distance between the cable clips shall be the same. The next topic is chain slings. Chain slings are made up of chain rings. The advantage of chain slings is that they deteriorate and corrode less. Chain slings are made of alloys. They can maintain their safe working loads under temperatures of 50 of. However, the entire chain becomes unsafe if problems arise in any section. A damaged chain sling will suddenly break and the damage is not as easily detectable as compared to rope slings. Therefore, a rope sling must be selected wherever possible for lifting. The chain sling shall be not be used under the following conditions. Points for attention. No ordinary chains shall be used for lifting. The safe working load SWL, shall not be exceeded. No knots or bolts that shorten the chain length shall be used. Chain slings have no flexibility, so striking objects must be avoided while lifting. Do not use hammers to reshape a deformed chain sling. When purchasing chain slings, those marked A uh, should be selected as they are of premium for normal use. Regular inspections shall be conducted. In this session you are going to look, shackles, hook rings are divided into two main categories, chain, D, type, shackle and anchor, bow, type shackle. Both are available with screw pins or round pins. Points for attention, never replace the shackle pin with a bolt. Ensure the pin is totally locked. Do not use screw pin shackles if the pin can roll and unscrew. During lifting, shackles shall not lean to one side. Hook rings are divided into two main categories, chain, D, type, shackle and anchor, bow, type shackle. 
Both are available with screw pins or round pins. Shackle pins must always be attached to the hook. Washers may be used to center the shackle. The next topic is eye bolts. Eye bolts are mainly classified into plain, shoulderless eye bolts and shoulder type eye bolts. The bolt length shall be 1-1.5 times the diameter of the bolt and totally drilled on the load. The bolt hole shall fit into the bolt. Safety points. The hook shall not be directly fixed onto the eye bolt. Plain eye bolts only apply to the vertical lifting. The angle of lifting of shoulder eye bolts shall not be less than 45 o. Washers may be used to ensure that the shoulder is firmly in contact with the surface. Never use a sling through a pair of eye bolts. The next topic, hooks. Hooks are a vital part of lifting gear. A variety of them cater for different lifting purposes. All hooks shall be installed with safety latches other than the specially designed hooks. Hooks can be installed with swivels to allow the load to revolve. Points for attention. Select hooks of the right size. Do not tie or remove the safety latches. Maintain the hook in a vertical position. If the hook is eccentrically loaded, the safe working load will be reduced. In this session we are going to look, rings, links, swivels, spreader beams, chain mesh slings and fiber slings. Most of the rings, links and swivels are marked with safe working loads, SWL. If no SWL is marked, the SWL tables shall be checked according to their diameters. Spreader beams are commonly used for lifting long loads. The weight of spreader beams shall be included as part of the lifting load. Each of the contacted points shall not exceed the SWL. The next topic, load. Know the weight and shape of the load. Loose loads shall be packed or placed in suitable containers before lifting. The containers must be structurally sound and four slings must be used to avoid inclining. The containers shall be examined and marked with safe working loads, SWL. Pay attention to the load's center of gravity. Ensure that it is kept directly under the main hook. The next topic, method. Plan a suitable lifting route to avoid collision with any persons, objects or overhead power lines. Do not drag loads. Move the loads as near to the ground level as possible. Stop people from standing in the lifting area. Do not ride on a load that is being lifted. When the crane is in operation, it must maintain a distance of at least 600 mm from any barriers or buildings. When visibility is blocked, the signal man shall render assistance. Lifting the load at a low speed so that the sling tightens slowly and maintains a balanced position. The final topic is environment. Safe lifting can be affected by rain, thunderstorms, strong winds, ground conditions and overhead power lines. Rains. Rains creates wet and slippery ground, loose soil and landslides, etc. Depending on the situation, the operator shall decide whether to continue working or not. When the soil is loose and could cause danger to the crane's stability, lifting work must be stopped. Thunderstorms. During thunderstorms, stop lifting operations immediately. Strong winds. In strong winds, Decrease the weight of the safe working load to improve safety. If the wind intensifies, work must be stopped. Ground situation. Loose soil. Use firmer, larger wooden planks to distribute the load and reduce the weight on the soil. When on a slope, adjust the outriggers to keep the crane horizontal. If there are excavations near the lifting appliances, strengthen excavations supports. Overhead power lines. Stay well clear of overhead power lines. The safety margin must be the jib's distance plus 6 meters, or the distance suggested by the electricity suppliers. Thanks for watching.